G'day friends, welcome to this video. I just want to do a quick first impressions review of this Crescent Render No Show Through Paper Journal. Sketchbook? Sketchbook. <laughs> it says here used with all media including spray paint so uh, we're not going to test that one today but I am really really curious about this I ordered it off Amazon and I don't think it was too expensive it just came off from one of those like recommended things you should buy which is terrible and uh, I don't like Amazon for that because I don't need a lot of encouragement to be enabled so cheers Amazon thanks a lot sweetie no show through paper so let's just see. Apparently the pages lay flat and regular binding, blah, 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 8.5 by 11, amazing, acid and lignin free, heavyweight paper, we'll see. <laughs> it says 32 sheets. All right. Apparently it's not supposed to show through with your Copic markers and your alcohol markers, which is what I'm super interested in because, oh, feels weird. Very, very smooth, but it looks kind of like, it looks a little interesting. Um, I'm very, very interested in using this with Copic markers because I tend to not use them in my journal a lot unless there's a layer underneath with some kind of medium like a matte acrylic or a gesso or something. But then I can't get that really smooth uh, blend that I get from alcohol markers because alcohol markers just eat through everything. Like Copics, Prismacolors, everything, they just eat through it. And um, I like water-based markers, but, and I love paint markers. Paint markers are great. But uh, water-based markers don't tend to give you a really, really flat, even, smooth colour. So, uh, because I like to do fashion illustration from time to time, I wanted to get a book or just some paper that would possibly not bleed through. So let's just flip to the back. Now, it says it lays flat, but I'm not really seeing that right now. I don't want to crack the spine. <laughs> the first time I use it and I completely ruin it. All right, well, that's as flat as it goes, I'm gonna say. Maybe the middle lays more flat. I don't know what their definition of flat is, but let's just, for all intents and purposes, say that it's not completely flat. Okay, okay, I think you can buy this, um, this paper with, like, just separately, like, maybe in a sheet, like, loose leaf paper or something. Um, but, yeah. I wanted it in the book because I like to work out of a sketchbook. So... Let's just grab some alcohol markers and see what we can do. I've also got some Tombow brush markers here, just in case anyone's curious. Uh, I'll, I'll test a bunch of things. Watercolor, I wanna see what watercolor does on this paper. But um, yeah, let's just, should we just go straight in with it? What if none of this works out? What if this drawing is just completely disgusting and you're watching me do it real time? <laughs> it's fine, I'm gonna keep it really, really simple. Nothing too crazy. So just put a base down. Let me just scribble in some skin tone, I guess. Now let's go in with some darker colors and, and let's just see how much this can really handle. I, I'm skeptical. I don't even want to flip the page just yet because I want to be shocked if it does work. I don't want to, I don't want to kill my vibe just yet if it doesn't work. I haven't really seen any reviews on this. At, like, I mean, I could have searched YouTube, but I like to be non-biased when I give my opinion and just see how I how it works for me because you know it everything works different for everybody right so I'm really you know layering that color in I want it to be quite saturated because it, you know this is what I would do in an illustration anyway I don't I'm not very conservative with the alcohol markers so I don't really want to have to change up the way that I do things to make it work for this book I want to see if it can handle it like it promised me it's a very smooth paper, so it is handling uh, like the the marker really well. It, it it gets a really really soft blend. You can see there that it just it's just melting into the paper, which is beautiful, and I love that. I'm gonna grab like a really dark color, like this Prussian blue, because I mean, if something's gonna bleed through, it's either this or black. So <laughs> let's just see. We'll give her a leaf crown. I also want to layer on some ink on top, like a, a Uniball Signo white or something, maybe a paint marker, just because I want to see how much this paper can really hold up to. It says it's heavy, heavyweight. To be honest, it doesn't feel like heavyweight to me. It feels like a little bit heavier than sketch paper, but not much. And I think that's just because I've been used to working on Canson mixed media paper and watercolor paper, which is just, it's like 300 GSM. I think this is 170. It is, this is 170. Let's just layer on some of this pen and see what happens. 
still layers nicely. You can work on top of alcohol markers just like you would on anything else. I think I was more skeptical because this paper obviously has to be made differently for it to be able to hold true to the claims that it's made. And for that reason, some things just don't work the way you're used to having them work. So for me, I like to get a feel for it all. And I could just swatch all the things out, but like I said, I, I tend to swatch the way that I'm going to use the product because for me, I couldn't swatch it the way I'm gonna use it. If I was just gonna swatch, for example, this color on this paper, I would just, do you know what I mean? That's great, but if in the end I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna layer on top like this and then I'm gonna come back and put this on top, like I wanna know that it's going to work the way that I'm going to use it. So that's why I tend to just go straight in with the drawing and then at the end of the swatch sesh, I've got something to show for it as well, which is fun for me. Let's get the actual Uniball Signo, which I'm probably lost. All right, I lied. Let's go on with this one. This is a Uniball Signo, but this is uh, the angelic color, very fine one. I like that. This is actually working a lot better on this paper than it does on my other papers. Maybe it just needed a smooth surface. Someone tell me why I'm so obsessed with drawing this same bow choker on every single thing I do. What does that mean for me? What are my emotions trying to tell me? <laughs> Look, I haven't really done the best job on this, but I hope you're just getting a feel for, for, um, you know, oh no, red and green, now it's Christmassy. I should have chosen a different blush. This is why I'm not a makeup artist. Just wanted to see how it goes. You know what? I've got that, this one, my fave new pencil, this Mitsubishi. It's vermilion on one side and Prussian blue on the other. The lead is like butter and soy nice to work with. So if I'm gonna swatch something and you know, I'm feeling like in a, I'm in a mixed media mood or that's what I wanna use this for, the product or the paper, because I'm technically I'm testing the paper today, not the product, but I wanna swatch it out the way that I'm gonna use it. Why not, right? You're gonna end up doing it anyway. And if it doesn't work for you, like how often do we really throw things out? You're gonna have to find a way to make it work for you. So that's why I, um, I just rather go in with a, an actual drawing or the little swatch dolls. Oh, that gives me a good idea. Let's test the watercolor while we're at it. Just because I, I use a lot of water when I'm doing... Ooh, I feel like that's not a great sign. So this paper looks like it's super oddly absorbent for the watercolor. Which is upsetting me a touch because I wanted to use watercolor in this book. But I don't think I'm going to get the results I desire. I don't think I'm going to get there. Maybe. We'll see. Can I just say, I've been seeing everyone do their swatch dolls and I am all the way shook. You guys are so incredible with how you've just taken that and just run with it and made them your own. I've seen like the most amazing examples out there that honestly put mine to shame. So congrats everybody. You've uh, really put me on my toes and I love it. I love seeing them all out there. I like that you guys are trying it. So many of you out there that say you can't draw and then I see you bust out these little illustrations that look like they should be published. It's incredible to me. You gotta give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Even if you can't draw, you know what sells a bad drawing? Confidence. <laughs> I'm not gonna be super confident about this one, so uh, I'll just keep my mouth shut, but we're just testing stuff out today. It doesn't need to be amazing. All right, my first impressions on the watercolor is no. I don't like that kind of a look. To me, it's it looks like when I'm using those Artist Loft watercolors where they're like powdery and chalky, you just don't get the color pooling that I like, and it's not that's not the look of watercolor that I like. If it's what you like, then fantastic, but it's just not for me. I feel like I'm pretty much done with this Chica. I love orange and blue together. I know they're like polar opposites on the color wheel, but I just love it. Are there any odd color combinations that you guys like? Like colors that you just think, like you know you're not supposed to mix if you were doing mixing, but you just like to use them together anyway. <laughs> Maybe that speaks to the part of me that doesn't like being told what to do. So I think I've tested pretty much everything I want to test. Let's just give this Crayola marker a little swirl around on the page and see what happens. Oh, that's not even drying quickly, that watercolor. So I'm confused by that. So I'm pretty happy with how the, the mediums are working. Not super happy with the watercolor, but you can't win them all, can you? It says on the thing that you can use with all media. It just depends on if you like what that media looks like. So if you're curious, 
that's what your watercolor is probably going to end up looking like. And it's not the watercolor, it's definitely the paper, because I noticed when I put water straight onto the paper, it just, it, it already kind of made that weird look, and then I added the watercolor to it, and it just... This is also filled with black watercolor, but sometimes I like to do shading with it. So I guess if you've got a water brush, maybe filled with watercolor, but that's a little extra. I wouldn't recommend going out and buying 50 water brushes for all your watercolors just to use in this book. If you've already got one that's got something in it, I'm sure you could use it. Like this is cute for a little grayscale sketch. I got these play color. This is Tombow as well. I love these. Look how vibrant that red is. Now I'm totally doing what I said I wouldn't do and just literally swatching it out. My favorite little uh, brush pens to draw with are these Zebra disposable brush pens. They're made with like an oil-based ink, I believe, which is supposed to stay waterproof so your signature will stay nice and safe. Some of them are like made for envelopes so that when they go through the mail, if it rains, everything inside will be destroyed, but it'll still get to your destination. <laughs> Do you know that's one of the biggest things I get worried about as uh, an Etsy seller? If everything actually makes it and makes it okay, I take such great care in like trying to package everything, but I always expect the worst, like there's going to be a massive storm and how am I supposed to package it from that? And I just think, I, I sh there's no way, like... You can't anticipate every shipment encountering a natural disaster. They happen when they happen and you can always send out another package. So I've, I've had to let that go because I was honestly stressing about it for the longest time. Just going to pop a little uh, distress paint on there just to see how paint goes. Paint looks great. Works the way it should work. I'm curious to see how these go on it. The distress crayons. I really, really like these. I just don't play with them enough. So it's a smooth surface. I think you've got a longer playing time than you do on a textured surface. They blend out really nicely. Let's just leave that one there for a sec and see what happens after we've let it dry for a hot minute. Let's uh, pop on some Dilutions paint and see if we can't get it to lift after it's dry. Look how awful I keep my paints. Isn't that awful? Please don't tell Diane. <laughs> so I think because it's a nice smooth surface, it's really nice to use these paints on. My favorite journal is still the large Dilutions journal. Just love the paper in those Dilutions journal. And I like the large because there's just more space to work. But I have a ton of journals and they're all great for their own thing. So I can't really say what's my favorite overall. I just know the ones I gravitate towards for the best paper are typically the Dilutions journal. It's just so crusty and dry. Why? Because I left it near the window? Probably. <laughs> Let me get rid of some of this mess. I'm going to hit it with my really fancy purple heat tool. Also a cheap Conair hairdryer. First of all, let's see if this crayon will move now that it's dry. Okay, so you can still smudge it out a little bit, uh, but it is pretty much on there. So that's good to know for the distress crayons. I'm assuming other pigment, you know, water soluble pigment sticks work the same as that. Let's grab something like a little damp and try and wipe up some of that. Let's see if we can't get some of this to lift off. Plop some water on there and usually that's enough to to reactivate it. Well, you know what else we should test? The um, dilution spray. This would be a pretty good test to see if it's um, if it's really bleed proof. <laughs> Some dye based ink. Just really saturate that in there, just to be fair. And just out of total curiosity, I'm gonna test a mermaid marker. Now, mermaid marker is a dye based ink as well, so it's pretty much like your dilutions ink just in a brush pen form and, you know, different colors, so. For good measure, let's throw a paint pen on there. I don't think this will go through. It doesn't even go through a normal paper, so. All right, let's see if we can't lift up some of that water. I'm gonna say that the, uh, the paints don't, the paints don't react like they would in your Dilutions journal. That's okay, good to know. Still a really nice uh, way to put color on the page, and it is, slightly buckling and warping a little bit. That's why I'm hesitant to say that it's heavyweight. I'm not really gonna say it's heavyweight. Oh, it says here, note, limited show through may occur over time with heavy application of xylene markers. I don't even know what a xylene marker is, but shouldn't it have one of those little asterisks if there's, a, if there's an exception to the rule? Media won't bleed through pages. I am so curious to flip this, like you have no idea. Let's just do one more test and see if we can't pull some of this color out. So your mermaid markers and your dilutions will spread a little bit, but you're not gonna get the same reaction from a normal type paper. There's lifting. The mermaid markers feather more than they spread, and the Dilutions ink will lift, but it's pretty saturated in there, so good to know. 
All right, I think I've tested everything that I'm pretty much going to grab, usually, typically. So let's just flip it and see what happens. Everyone cross your fingers and hold your breath. Oh, you are joking. No way. Are you seeing this? <laughs> I'm so shocked. Okay, let me just say one thing I will notice. Wherever I put the water, it's kind of... It's made like a debossed impression on the other side, like ever so slightly. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera. So bizarre. It's like literally debossed in the same area. Like I could probably just go over that and I can feel the swatch doll under there. Um, I'm so shook. It didn't bleed through at all. Not even the dark mermaid markers. How incredible. Well, now I feel guilty. I've just wasted this page. I might just have to gesso over everything. I like her. I'll keep her, but... This crap, it's gone. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, my first impressions were the Crescent Render No, th no, th no Show Through Paper. Uh, I was very, very skeptical. I don't, it doesn't lay flat like that, so I don't know. I don't know who put that image on there, but that's not the way it is. It's more like this. <laughs> um, I think you could crack it, to be honest, but I'm not interested in doing that right now. Maybe over time the book will loosen up. It is relatively new. Uh, well, it's, ex it's extremely new. This cover, I'm not a fan of. It's, um, look, you can already see scratches in it. <laughs> I just scratched it. You can see the scratches. <laughs> no, um, sorry if that makes you upset, but I'll probably cover this anyway. Uh, this cover is, is like a weird, like, you can see my hand. It feels smooth, like, fake, plasticky leather. Not even leather, it just feels like weird matte plastic. So, not loving this cover, I wish it just was paper, but these papers inside, not as heavyweight as I thought, that is my honest impression. Heavier than sketch paper, but lighter than mixed media watercolour paper. The, the paper itself is white, like it's a bright white, but it does have this like, slight, it looks like it's grey kind of, oh, I don't even know, like if someone like lightly misted a page, because it looks kind of like marble, like modeled really really light gray and white um but i don't think that's going to be a problem i think this would be great if you're doing uh i mean anything that you want to use these kinds of things for there is slight warping with anything that's wet media you can definitely use it if warping's not a problem for you then go for it um the alcohol markers i mean i really layered some of those in there over the top and over the top like these i just layered over and over and, uh, and this is a very dark colour. Even these, like, I thought these would definitely go through. But the mermaid marker, I mean, you can't even see it. So there's definitely something magical about this paper. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. I don't, I don't know what to say about this. I'm, I'm really honestly shocked. I'm, uh, I'm glad that I bought it. I'm going to probably reserve this journal just for um, Copic Market illustrations, to be honest, because I do like the effects of the paints and stuff in other journals where I can rework them and go over the top. I also like the idea of using my Distress Crayons in here as well, because it's so smooth and it's got that play time, I, um, I can definitely, you know, play with the crayons as soon as I use it without the worry of gesso. Uh, I think because it's such a smooth surface, it's not really going to sink into the substrate unless you push it, and then once it's dry, it's dry. So I can keep nice, you know, crayon looking lines, and I can also get nice smooth blends with it. So, I'm honestly shocked. I can't really say much more about it. Hope you enjoyed that review. <laughs> uh, this is the Crescent Render No Show Through Paper Journal sketchbook. I got it on Amazon. I'm going to leave the link below if you want to get one, if you want to check it out, if you've got lots of uh, Copic marker drawings that you want to keep in your books and you're so sick of them bleeding through. This one is definitely for you. If there is, um, you know, I think that, that they do sell these in loose sheets. So if you want to get some loose sheets and try it out, maybe you and a bunch of friends can go in on it. I really honestly don't think it was that expensive. I feel like this book itself was maybe $12, $14, which is, you know, I mean, I guess it's a little expensive for 32 sheets, but it's a big size. And to be honest, I've never used a paper that, that held up so well to Copic markers. So it's amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Super curious though. Let me just see one thing. What if I go in on the other side? Is that going to be a problem? Like, what if it's just... No. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Alrighty. Hope you enjoyed that review. Let me know if you're going to get one. And let me know what you thought about it. And let me know if there are any other ones out there that you want me to try or that... 
um, or that you're curious about the claims that it makes. I know that we all look at our stuff and think, you know, how, how legit are the claims? That's why I just like to test it out because, you know, I'm sure there are reviews on this already, but I just wanted to do one for my mixed media style and using a lot of the products that I see a lot of other people using in mixed media because sometimes I feel like it's just specifically art products or someone just tests Copic markers and I want to know what my dilutions are going to look like. I want to know what my Tim Holtz is going to look like. I want to know what all of it's going to look like if I'm going to invest in another journal because <laughs> I've got about a billion. I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.